that inner nod. Um, you know, putting your awareness there, there's like a kind of a state of expansion. And when the body is congested, it's hard to have that expansion. And so even if you, you tap on it or tap into it, like you can't like hold your awareness there because it's, it's almost like the congestion like kicks you off the place to where you can experience that. Yeah. And, and does that, does the vibration or frequency of that change over time or is it my awareness of it that's changing? your ability to perceive because like if you think about actually like, what what i perceive it feels like it's a higher right or a higher vibration or a little faster right. or it just right. seems to be changing right but i don't know if that's just my perception or if there's actually a change the changes in you yeah okay yeah because like mm -hmm. e even when we perceive that or some inner level of peace there's still like layers to it and so we're perceiving it from where we're at, but then as time goes by, it keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. And so like, you know, I, I go back to, you know, it's, this isn't the same, but it is like the, the you know, Master Cho once told this story, like, you know, his, his teacher made contact, but his teacher wasn't in a physical body. So the teacher made contact and gave him information in a transference of energy, like a was basically like a buzzing sound. And then the information like hits his brain and then he has to process it. And so, you know, that turned into all the books and classes and, and all that. And so at first, you know, his his teacher being the being that brought Buddhism to Tibet. But in the Hindu tradition, it would be Rama. You know, it's the same being. And then in the Egyptian tradition, it's Nefertim, who, who started a school that provided uh, the Kabbalistic teachings to Abraham. So, you know, this person, had, this, this being, has had major influence in the makeup of uh, the collective, you could say. And so his first experience, you know, he he had this direct communion with the, with the teacher and he, you know, got this information. And so he wouldn't talk about the teacher for a while. And then later he started referring to the teacher as holy master. Like the the teacher who gave him the information was a holy master. And then over a period of time, he stopped calling him Holy Master and started calling him a Bodhisattva, you know, and which is um, uh, like a higher level of evolved being. And for a long time, he refer referred to that being as a Bodhisattva. Then, like towards the end, before he left the body, he started referring to his teacher as a Buddha. And, you know, somebody asked him at one time, did the teacher like evolve, you know, why, why did we start off with Holy Master and then end up with Buddha? And he's like, did, did the teacher evolve and become a Buddha? And um, he said, no, my perception changed. At first I knew as a great, great being, I thought it was a Holy Master. And then over a period of time, I realized this is much greater than a Holy Master. This is a bodhisattva. And then over a period of time, he's like, this is even greater than a bodhisattva. This is a Buddha, right? And so we have these like layers of perception. Even if you think about like, okay, I'm I'm chanting, I'm chanting om, 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 om. And then you meditate on the gap, right? So in that gap, in that stillness, there there is greater expansion. But like, if you think about like, why, why is there expansion in the, in the stillness? Because really what you're doing in that stillness, if you think of like the deeper meaning of what obstacle means, you know, like the, the root word, it means to stand and to stare. Mm -hmm. 
Like, you know, we have the obstacles that you would see in the dictionary, but if you look at like the root words, it means to stand and stare, like to be unmovable, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you think about what an obstacle is, it's you hit an obstacle, you're like, Ugh, I can't do anything. I'm going to stand here, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to meditate on the, on the obstacle, right? And so in that space and gap, you're being still and standing and looking at the obstacles of your perceptions, right? You're chanting om, 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 which is good, but the expansion can only happen so much. So in that gap, it starts getting stronger because you go, okay, here is the, the obstacle of my perception. And because you're in a non-intellectual state, you're in an intuitive state, intuition is how you overcome obstacles. So what you're doing is you're, you're putting yourself in an intuitive state and you're looking at the obstacle and telling intuition, take care of that. Let's learn from that. Because how we, how we, how we get smarter, how we grow is the overcoming of obstacles. And so how we realize or recognize our Buddha nature or our Christ consciousness or our higher nature our our better aspects of ourselves is to see the obstacles of our perception and let intuition learn the lesson in the obstacle and help us to expand our perception, actually have us to realize something that's greater than what we thought, right? And so... When, when we're chanting and the space keeps getting longer and longer and you start to expand more, it's because intuition is having more time to deal with that obstacle and shift your perception. And as you shift your perception, you start to go into deeper states of stillness. You start to go into deeper meditative states, right? And so coming back to the nod or anything, a relationship, your body, like it could be anything. You're going to have a perception. And uh, the more that you are able to be in an intuitive state and overcome the obstacles of your perception, the more that you'll keep seeing things clearer and clearer. Like you fall deeper in love. You're more effective at work. You're you know, better at your, at the things that you want to be good at, like whatever it is, you get better at those because your perceptions are shifting, your perceptions are changing. And I would say the same for the nod, like the, the nod would be like a certain sound or perception, perception. And when you first hear it, you're like, that's amazing. And then after a while, it's like, yeah, it's really good. Like, it's good. But then you have a way where, you know, you kind of sit with it and you're presented with the obstacle of your perception again. And then uh, intuition pushes through that. And then all of a sudden, I I feel and experience the nod to a deeper degree, that inner sound. And then you sit with that for a while. And then after a while, you're like, uh, my perceptions are limiting now, right? So really, that ability to overcome those obstacles of perception has to do with our expansion of our awareness, our, our consciousness, our perceptions, like our deep, deeper states are all tied to this ability to, to internally overcome obstacles. And, and so it's very healthy to have your perceptions shift and change of something you know, like it should evolve. It should, it should change. If you're in a relationship, you should feel deeper love. If you're at work, you should get better. Like if you have some, some hobby that you do, you should improve, not just keep doing the same things over and over again. <laughs> and so I, I would say, you know, the nod is a very hard thing to, to perceive and to hear. But once you start hearing it, your perceptions of it will change over a period of time. Just like even experiencing the your higher nature, you, you might have a little bit of it and you're like, that's amazing. And then you look back a year and you go, whoa, I'm, I'm in a place that's even more amazing. But that first place was still amazing. But now it's just like, yeah, that was good. 
like that, that that was good but and and the same thing but it can just be with inner peace or that sense of well-being or even like how how the body heals you know there's a percep perception of one thing happening and then over a period of time you realize okay i gotta address this this and this and this is what makes it better you know, I'll I'll give you a like one that's a very practical thing, is that um, you know, like it, you know, I, you've heard me talk mm -hmm. about my back, like I broke my back when I was like twenty one or twenty, I think I was twenty two actually, and um, you know, it's presented some difficulties, <laughs> you know, as I've gotten older, especially, and you you know, I go through periods where it hurts very minimal, and then it can be very debilitating and then it goes back and you know i was always kind of treating it in a particular way because of the way it was fractured and um i had a surgeon tell me one time that the whole area in my low back was bone on bone so i treated it in that way and um it it it, it would be okay you know for the most part but as i if i did something like i picked something up or was a little too active eh, i'd feel it you know um and so uh over a period of time you know i got good at kind of managing it well then i went to the doctor and i said like look i want x-rays on my back I, I i just i don't want you to do anything i'm not asking you for medication i'm not asking you for pills or anything like that i just want x-rays of my back i want to know how bad it is and where it's bad so I know how to treat it. And so, you know, according to that surgeon, my whole lumbar was bone on bone. Well, the x-ray came back and none of that area is bone on bone. Like there is cartilage in between each of the joints. So with that, you know, as much as I would perceive, you know, something different, my perception of what the back issue was changed and then how I treated it. And I'd say, what, the last eight weeks, I've been pain-free. And I haven't been pain-free since my 20s, like late 20s. Like in, in all, all that happened was my perception of what the issue was changed. So then the treatment changed. And now I don't even put in as much effort as I used to. And I mean, I'm picking things up, I'm mobile, I'm getting up and doing things. Um, you know, Samantha keeps going, I really like the Greg that doesn't have a bad bag, you know, because I'm more active, I, you know, I'm able to do things. And uh, it wasn't that I couldn't do things before, I just, I had to be very careful, you know, careful how I walked, careful, you know, because the injury back in the day was pretty bad. And so my perception changed and as my perception changed i was able to change the body because you know of course there's an issue there but how i was perceiving it wasn't completely accurate you know that surgeon really got in my head really got in my head you know he was pushing me to do a surgery and um you know he wanted to fuse my whole low back i was like that sounds ridiculous i do not want to do that like you, you know that's but per perceptions will change in in just life as you grow and get older you know just young man's perception versus you know somebody in their 40s or 50s their perceptions are going to be very di very different and so but still you'll come across people who still have the perceptions and the point of view that they did when they were very young you know like the 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 obstacles in their perception haven't been dealt with they haven't been broken down and so they're stuck in the past you know they're stuck in a time that's not right now and so the more that you work these three aspects the frequency the resonance and the, the harmonics the more that those things shift so that your perceptions can change. And if you think of like what's happening with the, the 
chakras pumping faster. It's kicking off stagnation. It's kicking off lower vibration. And part of your perceptions are tied to how the chakras are functioning, right? If somebody is very solar plexus driven with a lot of anger in their solar plexus, they see the world through that lower emotional, angry perception. If the person's solar plexus is regulated and the heart's very big, they see the world through the eyes of that activated heart. And so your perceptions are tied to how well these chakras are functioning. 